Good evening, Victoria County. Oasis County, wow. Are you feeling the energy? Because I'm going to tell you, it's out there. It is out there. Um, for those of you who haven't met me before, my name is Deborah Medina. My husband, Noe, is with me. We were both born and raised in Beeville, Texas, so we're your, we were your neighbor on that side. We've lived for the last 20 years in Wharton. My grandmother is here. Ann Pesek is a longtime Victorian. My Uncle Ray lives in Port O'Connor. My Aunt Robin lives in Goliad. So we are home tonight. And if I'd have known that the governor, staff, and the senator needed a ride, we would have let them come with us from Midland because I was where they were earlier today. So we are working. Some of you have been tracking this race. Our birthday's tomorrow. I got into this race February 11th, 2009, when most people around me, including this uncle of mine, said, you're crazy, and you're never going to go anywhere, and nobody knows who you are. I have been working in the Republican Party for nearly 20 years as a grassroots activist, and I know from having been all over this state that most of you are just where I am. You're just an everyday, ordinary person trying to raise your family, run your business and get the government to leave you alone and it continues to encroach and encroach and encroach and encroach. And in November of 2008, a man tapped me on the shoulder, actually poked me, and said, why don't you run for governor? And Noe and I were together at that event and we both laughed at the man and we both thought, man, we sure wish somebody would do it because we knew that the choices for Texas were likely to be Kay Hutchison and Rick Perry, and neither one of them were going to advance conservative government. Neither one of them were going to advance the Republican idea. It took about three months for me to decide to get into that race to say, okay, I don't see anybody else stepping up to fight this fight, and I've had all I'm going to take. I'm going to get in there, and I'm going to fight this fight, and the outcome won't be mine. I'm going to do the good that's before me to do and let somebody else figure out what the outcome is going to be. And at that very first event that I spoke at, Carabas Restaurant on Kirby in Houston, about 30 people there, I said, you know, I'm going to commit to you tonight that I'm going to work my butt off. And I have a little bit, about 15 or 20 pounds in the last year. <laughs> I'm going to work my butt off to win this race. But the outcome is really not going to have a whole lot to do with me. What happens in this race is going to be up to you. I said that a year ago. I'm going to say it again tonight. What happens in this race is up to you. How hard are you going to work from now to March 2nd to make sure that we win this race? And have you noticed they're starting to, first, she wasn't going to have any effect, and then she might cause a runoff, and then she might be in the runoff. I'm, going to, I'm here to tell you tonight we're going to win this race. what I think is on the table and what opportunity I think we have. <laughs> some have put out in the media a speech that I gave in Austin some months ago. I spoke at a sovereignty and secession rally and there's certainly plenty of people in Texas. I was on an American for Prosperity teleconference nearly a year ago. Senator Dan Patrick was on that call, as was a state representative. They were supposed to be talking about the Texas legislative session, and when they opened it up to callers, I don't know about you, but Americans for Prosperity is not your radical right-wing group, okay? That's kind of your run-of-the-mill, average, Republican stalwarts. And the first question out of the box was, when are we going to secede? And the politicians danced around that question and got it off the table and somebody asked another question. The third question out of the gate, when are we going to secede? I don't think that's the option for Texas. I think we have ample tools and remedies available for us to restore state sovereignty. I'm going to talk about them. But I think what really lies before us is the opportunity to restore this great constitutional republic without shedding any blood. 
We have that opportunity if we will but work hard. And what I've said time and again is if we don't stand up and start to defend this free great nation and get it back to those constitutional principles, we will see a time in our history when our children shed blood for the freedom that we've allowed to be destroyed. That's where we are. That's the opportunity that rests with all of us tonight. How hard are we going to work from now until March 2nd to change the course? Because a runoff is fine and, and we'll fight through to April if we need to. But you let this candidate win, you let Texans win this race, it doesn't just change things here in Texas. It changes the country. Amen. It changes the country. So where are we? First, first place I go, and, and less so now because enough people have heard this speech, you always hear candidates ask, what's the first thing you would do when you get into office? And I've said time and again, that's the wrong question to be asking candidates. We've been fighting bigger government asking candidates what's the first thing they're going to do. I think the question that we ought to be asking is do you know the difference between policies that protect and preserve freedom and those that destroy it? I think that we have thought when the isms come to America, when socialism and communism and Marxism and fascism come, they'll come with purple spots and we'll see the purveyor of that bad policy coming at us. And the reality is it comes very subtly, doesn't it? I had the opportunity a number of months ago to be interviewed by a man named Gabriel Bruzon. Mr. Bruzon is the editor of El Mundo newspaper in Austin, Texas. It is a Spanish language weekly newspaper now, growing up in this part of Texas, there's a bunch of Garcias and Gonzaleses and Bettises and a few Medinas. There aren't too many Bruzones. And I was very curious about that name, Bruzone. And I asked him where he was from, and he said Cuba. And I thought, well, the table in this interview just got turned. When did you get here, and how did you get here? He said I was a Christian missionary to Ecuador, and I immigrated legally. And I said, Mr. Bruzon, if I had taken a picture of you three years ago standing on the street in communist dictatorship Cuba, and I took a picture of you today standing on the street in Constitutional Republic, Austin, Texas, what's the difference between the man in Cuba and the one in Austin? And he said the man in Cuba had no dreams. Everything was free. Healthcare was free, education was free, but we had no dreams. I could not plan where I would live or where I would work. We had no dreams. We have great opportunity in Texas. Something is happening here. People are starting to dream again because you've got a candidate who's carrying a message. It's not my message. It's the message that our founders stake their lives their fortunes and their sacred honor for. It's a message that kids in Tenement Square die for. What protects and preserves freedom? And I'm going to submit to you that there are two things. Private property ownership and gun ownership, they are the essential elements of freedom. ownership and gun ownership is as essential to freedom as air and water is to life. If you believe that, the first question you ask is not what's my sales tax rate going to be. You understand that we understand that private property ownership is an essential element of freedom and you don't compromise no matter how bad you need another sheriff's department deputy, no matter how bad the roads to your house are, no matter how much you think we need another wing on the school, you find another way to pay for that because you're not going to compromise freedom for your children. We're going to say private property ownership and gun ownership are essential elements of freedom. We're going to protect them. We're going to get rid of property tax in Texas, and we're going to do it in the next session.